somewhat of an X. Sorry, the benches were somewhat of an X factor uh, in the first game. What do you guys need to do to get more production um, from your reserve unit? Well, I would hope you start with how do we stop their bench? <laughs> uh, you know, th there was an X factor. Obviously, we talked about it yesterday, but uh, Carmelo and, uh, and Anthony Simons came in the game, especially in the first half, uh, and had a huge impact. So uh, we have to do a much better job of guarding them into the game. Uh, we cannot allow those guys to go 8 of 15 from the three-point line. Uh, and then for us, obviously, you know, uh, the second unit, uh, Monte, Paul, Jamichael, Marcus Howard. Uh, I tried to keep Nicola or Michael Porter on the floor at all times, so we had a go-to player. Um, but when you're not getting stops, Mike, it makes it really hard to get out and run and attack and play with pace. Uh, we only had seven fast break points first game, um, and I thought early on we looked to attack when we got stops. As the game went along, it became a more of a half-court game, uh, and that, that's definitely not in our best interest. So uh, it always starts on the defensive end. If we can get stops, get out and run, they switched a lot with that second unit, so we have to be able to exploit that as well. Next, we'll go to Mark Medina. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Uh, I got a broad question here about, like, mental health and wellness. How, uh, how do you think the mental toll this season compares to the bubble, and what are some of the things you and the guys have done this season try to navigate through those challenges? Yeah, it's uh, – well, this has been a, a really challenging year. Uh, and, and I think especially it's probably more challenging because of the 83 days we had in Orlando. You know, if, if we weren't a team that was down uh, in the bubble for 83 days or not at all, um, this season would still be challenging, but not as much as it has been for us. Uh, this has been a very long year. I think I speak for all of our players, all of our coaches, all of our staff. Um, 72 games, very condensed schedule, and the COVID testing protocols – have definitely worn thin on everybody. So um, that's why I think it's remarkable that we've had the season we've had, fifth best overall record, third best in the West, and Nicola's had the season that he's had because um, to do what he's doing, not miss a game, and to play the level he's played at is really remarkable, and you have to give him a ton of credit and respect for doing so. Next we'll go to Joel Rush. Hey, Coach. Uh, in the last game, they had, I believe, 19 um, free throw attempts to your guys, I think under 10. But in any case, do you think that's a function of needing to be more aggressive and getting to the rim? Um, well, there were a bunch of calls that were missed, you know, according to the NBA uh, postgame report that was sent back to us, um, where I think maybe I think in that report it stated that Nicola probably could have been, gone to the foul line eight more times. Um, so, yes, we can be more aggressive. Uh, we can attack the basket. Um, but, you know, certain players are not attack the basket players. <laughs> uh, so we are who we are. We have not been a high volume free throw team all season. Um, but for them to outshoot us from the line 19 to 8 to your point, Joel, is something that we have to do a better job of. Damian Lillard got there nine times, so we have to do a better job of limiting his free throw attempts. But um, anytime you're more aggressive, anytime you put more pressure on the defense and on the rim, that's going to be, a, a, most times, a big positive. Next, we'll go to Vinny Benedetto. And Michael, kind of building off that, how flexible do you feel like you can be defensively? Can we turn that music down a little? I, I'm, I'm can, you, can you repeat that? I got a DJ behind me. I can't hear much. Yeah, uh, how flexible do you feel like you can be defensively in Dame and DJ? If there was a situation where you wanted a little more size on Dame, is it an easy swap with Austin on Dame, Faku on CJ, or is that something that, that, would, that would kind of take a lot of adjustment? No, I don't think that would be a lot. Uh, I think, you know, anytime you play a great player, uh, you should give them different looks, and not just from a coverage standpoint. But to your point, it could also be matchup standpoint, um, putting different guys on him, giving him different looks, trying to keep him off balance. So if Faku starts off on Dame, uh, yes, we could use an Austin Rivers on him at times. We could use an Aaron Gordon on him at times. So uh, we could use a Shaq Harrison off the bench. So we, we have all options uh, at our disposal. Uh, as the game goes along, the personality of the game well, will take its form and we'll have to adjust and react accordingly. Next, we'll go to Pat Graham. 
Hey, Coach, how you doing? Thanks for taking the time. Um, I know we've talked about this before, and I know you don't want to stifle Nicole and his creativity, but is there a, is there a tipping point between passing and shooting you like to see? No, I, I actually think uh, much is being made about nothing. He had one assist. We couldn't make a three-point shot. I think on wide open threes, we were five for 11. Open threes, we were three of 14. Um, he got off. He scored. They played him straight up a lot. So he needs to score. If Nicola would have had 10 assists and 18 points, the narrative would have been he's got to be more aggressive to score. So you're never going to please everybody, especially in a loss. Uh, I trust Nicola a thousand percent. He did make the right reads. He did kick out the guys. The bottom line is they made 19 threes and we only made 11. So th that is a 24 point differential. If we made some threes in that first game, he would easily have had probably five or six assists and you wouldn't be hearing this ridiculous narrative that we're hearing going into game two. All right, we have time for one more here. We'll end with Leonardo Torres. Hi coach, it's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Coach, this team has been characterized by resilience. The team usually responds <clears> to <throat> challenges and tonight will be a big one. What do you think the team must change on defense to get the win tonight? Yeah, and I would agree, Leonardo. I think we have been a very resilient team the last few years, and I expect that to continue. I think that's just who we are, and it's in our DNA. Uh, what we must do differently on defense especially uh, is to be, one, a lot more disciplined. Uh, we had too many breakdowns in game one uh, that they took full advantage of, and that led to easy points for them. So we have to be a lot more disciplined with our game plan, our rotations, and as well as our personnel discipline. There's no way that Carmelo and Anthony Simons should make eight threes off the bench. That's poor defense, poor awareness. Uh, and the second thing I would say is just um, a lot more energy, a lot more physicality. Uh, last game, we only had nine deflections, which is a very low number. We only had one loose ball recovered, our lowest of the season. Uh, we didn't contest over 20 shots which is not acceptable in a playoff game. So uh, those are the things, Leonardo, that we're looking forward to improve upon going into tonight's game. All right, that'll do it. Thanks, Coach. Right. Thank you.